أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Today inshallah we'll touch upon some of the themes from chapter 51 Surah Al-Dhariyat The Scattering Winds Now uh, the verses mentioned in, in the surah they mention various forms of rizq of bounties, of provisions from Allah Taala, and they stress that the rizq comes from Allah only and not through any other means. So rizq is not just food or wealth, it also extends to spiritual or anything that benefits man, anything that you need in your life, like children, a good wife, the necessities of life, and spiritual aspects like nearness to Allah, guidance, you know, the love for Him. These are all rizq, from, you know, provisions from Allah Taala. So the Allah's beautiful attributes are razzaq and the act of providing generously, they're prevalent throughout the surah. Now the main theme of the surah is giving and withholding are in Allah's hands exclusively. Nobody can give and nobody can take away without Allah's permission. Allah is the one who provides and takes away. So that's what the, the surah is talking about. And Allah wa ta'ala wants us to learn tawheed, to learn monotheism, to go to him for everything that you need. If you need some, something, go to Allah first and then do your, do your effort. But you go to Allah first if you need anything. You don't go to anyone else because everything is in his hands. He gives to whoever he wants and he takes, you know, he withholds from whoever he wants. So, and a lot of times the withholding is because of sin. So we have a choice. If we want Allah to provide, we have to be obedient to him. With disobedience, Allah may hold back some of these provisions as a, you know, as a way to discipline us. So following the path that Allah has set for man will invite grants from him. And disobedience by choosing a different path will lead to many bounties being withheld or even worse punishment. So if we look at the uh, verses, Allah Taala starts the first four verses mentioning signs of his great <coughs> creation. You know, things that great things that we may take for granted and we don't think about. Uh, from verse 1, وَالذَّارِيَاتِ ذَرْوَةِ By those winds scattering dust and dispersing. فَالْحَامِلَاتِ وِقْرَى And those carrying a load of water. فَالْجَارِيَاتِ يُسْرَى And those clouds sailing with ease. فَالْمُقَسِّمَاتِ أَمْرَى And those clouds apportioning each matter. So what, what these verses are pointing to is the, the rain. Rain and winds and how the the formation of clouds, because you see sometimes clouds start forming and then wind comes in and scatters them and it never rains. Other times the winds gathers all the clouds and it drives them and it rains wherever Allah wants. So, uh, you know, these these are all great signs from Allah. Well, فَالْجَارِيَاتِ يُسْرَى You have trillions of gallons of water floating in the air quietly and easily I mean, if you think about it, if you need to, to, to get, you know, 100 gallons of water from point A to point B, you need engines and you need a lot of noise and you need a lot of effort. And Allah is moving all of these things effortlessly, you know, in, in the clouds. And then wherever he wants, it rains. So these, and he, and he apportions the rain according to his wisdom. Some, some land gets a lot of rain, some land gets no rain. And that's up to, up to Allah's wisdom. So Allah mentions those four important things. He takes an oath with them. You know, so he, he, that oath, the purpose of it is for us to pay attention. That these are very important things. So the answer of the oath comes in verse, in verse 5, in uh, 5 and 6. la sadiq wa inna dina la waqi'. Indeed, what you are promised is true, and indeed the rec recompense is to occur. What the verses are saying is, whatever Allah promised in the Quran will happen, will surely happen, 100%. There is no doubt 
that there is death, there is life after death, there is reward, there is punishment. Everything in the Quran is sadiq, is, is, is a truth from Allah. The day of judgment will happen. The day when we have to answer for everything that we do in this life will happen. And it's and, and believe in Allah and the hereafter is a is is a matter of time. It's not a matter of choice. It's not up to you whether you want to believe in it or not. You will believe in it. The mat the, the choice is do you believe early when it benefits you? Or do you believe at the moment of death when you see it clearly? And now it does not benefit that person. It's up to you. The, but you will believe one way or another. You will believe. You will see the truth. So Allah, the words of Allah Taala are the truth. His promise is the promises are the truth. His threats are the are the truth. Whatever He mentioned in the Quran, they're all true, and they will happen. And uh, the uh, the truth is that man will be held accountable for all the actions. So the ones who reject the truth and die on that state will face eternal torment. And the ones who accept the truth early on and in their lives and they form their lives according to it, they will have eternal bliss. And that's what, what believers strive for. And the pivotal verses in the surah appear in verses 22 and 23. When Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُوَعَدُونَ فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّهُ لَحَقٌ مِثْلَ مَا أَنَّكُمْ تَنْتِقُونَ And in the heaven is your provision. That means with Allah. Allah has, the, has your provision. In heaven is your provision and whatever you are promised, then by the Lord of the heaven and earth, indeed it is truth, just as sure as you are speaking. It's as truth as I'm speaking to you and you're hearing me. The provisions are from Allah. Um, and one meaning is that the belief in Allah is the greatest provision that we can receive. I mean, that is a great na'mah from Allah to be, to be guided. And another meaning is that actual provisions are in Allah's hands. He gives whomever, whomever he wants. He gives somebody a lot. He gives somebody a little according to his wisdom. He is the wise. He is hakim. You know, he knows if, if he gives somebody a lot, it's going to make him bad. And if he gives somebody a little bit, it's gonna, he's going to go bad. He gives according to his wisdom. And whatever Allah gives you is for your benefit. And that's what, what we believe. And uh, Allah wa ta'ala made many of the things in the universe fixed. The sun rises and sets on schedule. Uh, the months and years, day and night, uh, you know, the properties of, you know, ground is solid, wood is solid, water is liquid, it doesn't change properties. These are all fixed. And Allah made them fixed because we need them in our life. We need to plan our lives according to them. But he subhanahu wa ta'ala kept a few things, made it variable. So we recognize his power through them. And rain is one of those things. Rain is not guaranteed. Rain is up to Allah. He can provide it. He can withhold it for years and let the, let the ground die and let everything, everything die. Or he can send too much of it and now you have floods. According to his wisdom, he uses the rain so that man knows that it is in Allah's hands. Because if you go for two, three years and no rain... If the whole planet gets together and, you know, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Can you make the, the rain come down? Nobody can make the rain come down. You have to pray to Allah and Allah brings it down. If all of humanity gets together and makes a decision, we're going to make it rain, they cannot implement it. That's in Allah's hands only. So rain is used as a reward or, or as a punishment according to Allah's wisdom. Now, the, uh, the story of Prophet Ibrahim appears in the surah and enforces the theme of generosity and provisions from Allah Taala. He sent angels in the form of men to destroy the people of uh, Sayyidina Lut, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, he wanted because they were, they were terrible and they deserved to be destroyed. So these angels went to the to Prophet Ibrahim and he treated them with a nice fat calf. 
and they would not touch it. So he was afraid from them. And they told him, no, do not be afraid. We, we are, you know, angels from your Lord. And they gave, the, gave him the glad tidings of Ghulam and Alim, of, of a, a, a learned boy, not just a boy. I mean, Prophet uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim, his wife was barren. His wife Sarah was barren. They had no children. He wanted a child. And he was very old. And these angels not even told him, you're going to get a son, you're going to get a ghulam alim, a, a learned boy. So it, it, that's a great gift from Allah. And at the same time, those same angels were being sent to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for the evil acts that they, you know, they practiced homosexuality in the open. They used to, to rob people and do all kinds of crimes and, and lewd behavior. And Allah ta'ala destroyed them. So, so these are examples that when you're obedient to Allah, Allah provides you. And there is nothing impossible, uh, you know, to Allah. You know, they, Sayyidina Ibrahim and, Sayyid, uh, and Sayyidina Sara were very old age. But Allah, Allah can provide. Allah can make any barren, whether it's land, whether it's a human being, can make it fertile. Allah, ta'ala, it's, it's in his hands. So Allah Taala remains man, reminds man of his power and bounties that man takes for granted. Another set of verses in verse forty-seven to forty-nine, Allah says, بَنَيْنَاهَا بِأَيْدٍ وَإِنَّا لَمُوسِعُونَ And the heaven we constructed with strength, and indeed we are its expander. And we know now that the universe is expanding. You know, the universe is not fixed. And the Quran was saying that because it's the words of Allah. No, no discovery, no matter what type of discovery it is, will ever come to contradict the Quran. It will enforce the Quran. And the earth we have spread out, and excellent is the preparer. And of all things, we created two mates. Perhaps you will remember, you know, male and female, the plants are, are male and female, everything is, is in pairs. And this Allah are, is reminding us of all of these bounties from him. But then the next verse comes. So how can we thank Allah for these bounties? The next verse comes, verse 50 explains. <laughs> if you recognize all these bounties and you want to thank Allah, so flee to Allah, indeed I am to you from him a clear warner. Such eloquence of the Qur'an and the imaginary. Usually you run away from something scary. And Allah says, when you are afraid of his anger, run to him. Don't run away from him. You cannot run away from him. You have, the safety is running towards him while you run away from everything else that, that, that scares you. So this fleeing, fafirru ilallah, fleeing gives us the image of breaking the chains, you know, that, that this life, you know, holds us with. You break those chains, you get rid of, of, of your attachment to this life, and you run towards Allah, and you obey Him, and you do what He wants you to do, so you can get that reward. And in verse 51, Allah says, وَلَا تَجْعَلُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرْ إِنِّي لَكُمْ مِنْهُ نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ And do not make as equal with Allah another deity. Indeed, I am to you from him a clear warner. So you thank him by going to him and by not associating and making shirk and, and elevating anything, whether it's yourself, your desires, or someone else, to the level of Allah and to the level of obedience of Allah. So Tawheed is the only way to thank Allah by realizing that all bounties we enjoy and rizq come from Him. He provides it and He can take it away. And that's what we have to, we have to be firm on that belief. So failing to recognize Allah as the sole actor in this universe will lead to eternal loss and torment. And Allah says in verse 56, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ this is, a, this is a critical verse in our faith. And I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. You ask an unbeliever, why are you here? They have no idea. They don't know why they're there. They don't know what they're supposed to do. We don't have that, that confusion. 
It is very clear. The matter is very clear to us. Allah says, I only created you to worship me. And worship is to obey, to, to behave the way that he told us to behave. That's worship. Worship is not just praying and, and doing salat and, and, and siyam and these. Worship is, is a, you form your whole life according to Allah's instructions. That's how you, you worship him. So the verse is very clear that that's the purpose of, of our life. And worship is developing knowledge of Allah. And this knowledge will lead to obedience. And obedience leads to happiness in that sequence. So when you know Allah, you will love him, you will obey him, and you will be happy. You cannot obey him without knowing him and loving him. You have to know who Allah is. That's where, where, where learning is, is a critical component in our life. You can spend all your life praying. It won't benefit you. If you don't dedicate some of your time to know who you are praying to, what does he want from you? That is not going to come by osmosis. You're, you're not going to wake up in the morning and say, aha, that's what I'm supposed to do. You have to learn. You have to seek that knowledge. You have to seek the knowledgeable. You have to know what you're supposed to do in this life. And then you act based <laughs> on that knowledge, and that makes you happy. So Allah and, and the... Uh, Allah says, وَمَا مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَالرَّزَّقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ In verse 57 and 58. says, Allah says, I do not want from them any provision, nor do I want them to feed me. Allah doesn't need anything. We need Allah. Indeed, it is Allah who is the continual provider, the firm possessor of strength. So that, that whole concept that anything that you need, comes from Allah. It has, to, it has to be firm. You cannot think that your rizq is, comes from your manager or from the company that you work for or from a president or from a king or from whatever. Allah is the one who sends that rizq through these people, but he is the one. So when you want it, you go directly to him. You don't go to anyone else. And Allah says, he is the razzaq, the quwwat al mateen. He is, he has it, and he is able to deliver it. Nobody can stop him. If he wants to give you things, nobody can prevent them. If he doesn't want you to have something, if the whole world wants it to give it to you, they won't be able to. And that's what Tawheed teaches us. Your relationship is with Allah and nobody else. Your competition is with yourself and your relationship is with Allah. So that has to be, you know, no one should fear any loss of provisions with obedience to Allah. If, if you are a good Muslim, you shouldn't fear that you're going to lose. You're going to lose out on something. You, you have everything to win. You do not lose with obedience and you do not gain with disobedience. If you try to achieve something with disobedience, you'll never achieve it. And if you, if you achieve it, it'll be the worst thing that can ever happen to you. So the surah ends with a threat to the ones who disbelieve and neglect the reason they were created for. Allah says, فَإِنَّ لِلَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا ذَنُوبًا مِثْلَ ذَنُوبِ أَصْحَابِهِمْ فَلَا يَسْتَعْجِلُونَ And indeed, for those who have wronged is a portion of punishment like the portion of their predecessors. So let them not impatiently urge me. Do not, do not ask for punishment. And that's what non-believers do. Oh, bring it on. You say, oh, you say we're going to go to hell, bring it on. That, that's, that's the speech of, of, a, of a stupid person that does not believe. If they knew what was waiting, they would not be saying that. فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ يَوْمِهِمُ الَّذِي يُعَدُونَ And woe to those who have disbelieved from their day which they are promised. The final day when they have to stand in front of Allah and answer. And we have to be afraid of that day because that's what a believer you know, should do. You should, we should fear that before you say anything, before you do anything, Think about what you're going to tell Allah. How are you going to answer when he asks you, why did you, you know, why did you make fun of this person? Why did you take this from this person? Why did you hurt this person? You have to have an answer. And if you prepare that answer, you'll never do it. So think about the day that, you know, believing in the day of judgment is number two after believing in Allah. Because if you don't believe there is a reward and there's a punishment, 
then how are you going to be steadfast in this life? So Allah Taala will send calamities in this life, just like He sent it on previous nations. So we have to be, be we have to be aware of His of His anger and His punishment, and we should not invite it. Now, the last thing I want to mention is the name of the surah, Surah al dhariyat It embodies the theme of the surah that providing and holding is from Allah. He is the one that drives, just like the wind can drive the clouds someplace where it rains or scatter them away where it never rains. It belongs to Allah. Giving and withholding are in Allah's hands. If you want something, go to him. Don't go to anyone else. So a believer should focus on pleasing Allah and not fearing any loss in provision with obedience. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'na wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilma wa arina al-haqqa haqqan wa arzuqna attiba'a wa arina al-batila batilan wa arzuqna ishtinaba wa jjalna min man yastami'una al-qawla fa yattabi'una ahsana wa adkhilna bi rahmatika fi ibadika al-salihin subhanaka Allahu wa hamdika ashadu an la ilaha 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 il